to Night Thoughts, the Cars Podcast. With Manorama's number one source for news, reviews, and thoughts about the new wave rock legends, the Cars. Oh, and a little bit of uh, Seal Wolf, Sunshine, and Rainbows. You're listening to Night Thoughts, the Cars Podcast, episode 31. I'm one of your hosts, Dave. If this was Highlights Magazine, I'd be goofus. <laughs> and joining me is Donna. She, of course, would be gallant. Hope everybody remembers Highlights Magazine. Goofus and gallant. Goofus makes silly comments and cusses on the podcast. <laughs> gallant spreads sunshine and rainbows to the podcast audience. So that's, that's how we're rolling. So, Donna, before we get started to the business, yes, I, I have a question for you. Okay. Have you ever gone into a store, like grocery store, to buy bananas, and you see like those little orphan bananas sitting off to the side because some old guy, you know, he wanted four in the bunch and it had a bunch of five and he, you know, they chuck them off and side. I'm the guy who buys those orphan bananas because I feel bad. Oh, oh, Dave. So, and oh, I do it at pumpkin patches too. You know, people cut the pumpkin, then they don't want it. It's like, yeah, I'll buy that pumpkin. So, (laughs) I, I have an unboxing of sorts, a real quick unboxing of something that I purchased on eBay because it's been on there forever, but it has some historical significance. Really? Okay. okay. So um, I'm, I'm ripping into it now. It came in an envelope and <laughs> opening it up. It is. Oh my gosh. They packaged it so nicely. In my hands right now, I am the proud owner of the car's concert from 8 24 79 at Woolman skating <laughs> rink i have the ticket stub now as reviewed by our old pal rico in a past episode so um you know the significance of it is is that um yeah it is a ticket stub but the cars is written on it in ink with an ink <laughs> pen <laughs> so hey that's that's a part of my collection now. i'm very happy <laughs> i cannot Pretty believe awesome. you bought that well, you know, somebody had to buy. The guy wanted three bucks for it. It just sits there and sits there on eBay. Somebody's got to get it. So <laughs> that's so, awesome. That, I'll 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 post a uh, picture of that later. Please do. All right, to our business. Uh, three ways to get your night thoughts, people. And I know you're listening on one of the platforms, either iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Uh, do us a favor and subscribe. And if you're on iTunes, uh, leave us a review. You can give us up to five stars, and and you know. Let us, let us know what you think. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at bit.do, because we're all about the bit.do. Bit.do backslash FB Night Thoughts. Follow us on Twitter at The Cars Podcast. And send us an email, nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com. All right. So there we go. That's our business. Very nice. So, Donna, do we have a topic for this episode? We do. We do. And it's funny, all up until like three seconds ago, I was calm and collected. I was doing good. And now I'm a little weak in the knees. I'm a little excited about this topic this week. Do you have a brown paper bag handy to breathe into? <laughs> I should have grabbed one. No, I oh. I might need to. Well, if, I, if I step away, it's because I went and did that. So I didn't pass out. Yeah. Um, no, I'm very excited about this week's episode. Um, We have a special guest, Rolling Stone, said about this person that in concert, he looks like a diminutive alchemist trying to whip up a new amalgam out of music and electronics. Wow, I I need a thesaurus for that review. A lot of of big words in there. Um, He's also been called a synthesizer wizard. And most recently, George in the Fanorama dubbed him as... The car's secret sauce. I yes. am very thrilled and honored to welcome our special guest, Mr. Greg Hawks. Hi, Greg. Hello, hello, greetings. <laughs> yeah, Happy friend, to be yeah. here. Thanks. And, and what what al- what kind of alchemist did you say? A diminutive. Oh, a diminutive alchemist. Yes. Wow, wow. That's yeah, you. That, that's so they that they are high- appropriate. <laughs> They're height shaming you in that review, Greg. I'll, That's I'll not take nice. That is a compliment. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. I resemble yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yes, you do. 
Well, hey, if, if I can start off, Greg, I have a big thank you to give to you. And since I have this opportunity, I'm going to do it. And I, I'm okay. sure you don't remember this because, you know, you have such great fan interaction. But way back in February of 2001, um, I'm a school wow. teacher. I did um, a magic show with my K through two special needs classroom. And they were just cute as buttons. And <clears throat> I, I filmed parts of it to put on the school district's public access cable station. Well, the, the kicker on this was that they would only allow us to use these um, preset clips for background music. And they were horrible, just horrible. And I didn't want that. I wanted Ants in Your Pants from Niagara Falls. Wow. And I, I submitted it to them and they, they wouldn't accept it. They said, no, no, you need to have a release from the artist. So wow. I, I, I just happened to have access to your email address. I emailed you. You said it was great. You could use anything you want. Um, you even put a little thing in there for the district that I submitted to them, and they, they put it on the air. So I wanted to personally thank you for helping me stick it to the man. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. That's all, always a worthwhile endeavor in my book. Uh, yeah. So you're you're welcome in that regard. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks. For that nice story. Okay. <laughs> so, so we've got um, some some questions for you okay. that, that we want to know. Hopefully, I'll have some answers. I think you will. Um, <laughs> my first one is, and this is just out of curiosity. What are like the you know top one or two questions that you are tired of answering? Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. I guess uh, who thought of the name? <laughs> and it was David, of course. Yes. Uh, otherwise, I don't. Boy, I don't know. All right. I'm, so I'm cutting out that question, Greg. <laughs> who thought of the name? All right, that one's cut out. Well, because yeah, I, I, just... I already gave away the answer anyway. But I think <laughs> yeah, that's right. Everybody here knows that already. Yeah, I would assume so. So we don't want to ask any questions that you've answered a million times, but we, you know, Donna and I, as, as fans, um, we just want to ask questions that pop into our heads Fair as members enough. of the Fanorama. So, you know, these may be a little bit obscure or something, hopefully something you've, you've never had to answer before. Okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Are you starting with me then, Dave? Well, yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, well, thanks. Um, I forgot to say in my little intro, I was going to tell you that um, you probably, you may or may not know this, but Benjamin Orr once referred to you, Greg, as a living cartoon, which I thought was, <laughs> I thought was very cute. <laughs> which are, oh, yeah, that's funny. I'll take that as a compliment, too. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I can, wow, I can just imagine Ben saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, of course, congratulations on being inducted into the Rock Hall. I'm sure you've heard that a lot lately. Well, um, thank you. I had the pleasure of going to Cleveland and, and watching you. Um, uh -huh. uh -huh. It was wonderful and amazing. And I, um, I ran into David uh, in the Rock Hall Museum, but I didn't see you there, which is probably lucky for you because I was a little giddy. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I was there the night before. There was like a, the the night before the induction ceremony. There was like a party at the at the museum itself. Okay. And uh, I think we all went there. Everybody in the band, that is. Uh, and then I think pretty much it's funny because I think everybody else in the band went out to dinner and didn't stay at the museum for very long. Okay. But uh, but. As for myself, I was more interested in hanging out at the museum, so I declined the dinner offer, uh, even though that's a whole nother story because it was actually at this uh, Italian restaurant in Cleveland that I had been to before, uh, and, you know, very nice, and, and the guy, the, the owner is a guy, Dante, and super nice guy, uh, but, you know... I, you know, I wanted to spend more time at the museum because, you know, that was that was sort of uh, the whole reason, you know, that we were there that week. So uh, and plus the uh, the the rest of my family had just sort of shown up that day 
and and you know that's basically what we wanted to do so uh but yeah it was pretty surreal seeing uh the new inductees uh uh exhibit uh <laughs> You know, because I, I mean, I knew what I had, had uh, uh, donated, uh, but it was just, it was, it was fun seeing it all put together. Yeah, it was really cool. Did you get a and, chance to tour the rest of the museum too? Yeah, I did. I did. We awesome. did. You know, we, we spent, you know, a fair amount of the rest of the evening. Then I think uh, maybe the rest, Elaine and the kids went back on Sunday. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but I didn't, I, I was just there that, that Friday night. I imagine you were, night. your time was probably pretty packed with interviews and press stuff and all of that. Yeah, you get it started, much free time? It, yeah, it started getting crazy. I got there, what the induction was on Saturday. I arrived, in fact, all of the cars arrived on Monday because we had four days of rehearsal booked and we rehearsed at the uh at the house of blues in cleveland nice uh and i can't remember the name of the street but it was just a it's just like a five minute walk from the hotel which the hotel was like right across the street from the what is it the cleveland public auditorium which okay. is where the ceremony itself was held right and just another five minute walk in the other direction uh to get to the uh, what, uh, the museum itself, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum. Nice, that's pretty convenient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I forget, I forget what I was talking about. Oh, uh, it was I was just basically, I guess, going through our schedule because then then we rehearsed at the House of Blues like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay, Friday too. Before that that party at the museum and and uh after after the first day it was i don't know i was like nervous after the first day because i didn't think it sounded too good <laughs> <laughs> well had you guys and, had and you know because the last yet? the last time we had gotten together was the the shows in 2011 right and and also it was, and that 2011 being, that was basically the last time that David had performed, and and basically Rick too. He Rick might have done a couple little one-offs here and there, but uh, you know, so there was that, and uh, and then, so you know, we started, you know, it, we, it was hard enough just trying to uh, decide. And agree on what songs we should perform. That that took a lot. That took a lot of effort. Uh, and you were so deciding finally that we. What's you were, that? You were deciding that on Monday. Well, we had been trying to come to some sort of conclusion for about a month in advance. Oh. And and finally had it sort of sorted out to. Uh, to what to what was it? Uh, you might think. Uh, best friends girl what else moving in stereo well moving in stereo and just what I and, needed. Uh, and just what I needed yeah and and just to well just to agree on those four took a lot of effort and after the first couple days of rehearsal uh, actually moving in stereo wasn't even on the list at first we had talked about it but uh, but it really wasn't one of the contenders. And uh, we tried even doing a version of Drive, but we once we did it in rehearsal, it really wasn't working. And uh, so that so then we decided, well, we'll just do three songs. And then the uh, the director for the HBO show came to the rehearsal probably like on Wednesday or something like that. And so he was like really encouraging us to do four songs. It's like, you know, just in case something happens. And so at that point, moving in stereo got uh, got moved back into the possible lineup. And so I think we did that at the rehearsal. I think the director liked it. Uh, it sounded good to me. Yeah. Scott, 
Scott uh, Schreiner from Weezer, our guest bass player, uh, already knew it. Nice. So I, I don't know whether anybody even told him to learn it, but he already knew it. Uh, so it worked out well. Yeah. And then, you know, like you guys know, we did perform it, but yes. then it was edited out of the broadcast. But, yeah, uh, which is a shame because it rocked. It was such a uh -huh, great that, Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, yeah, I thought it was good. Yeah, it was it was excellent. <clears throat> sounded sounded very very tight. Um, and on on the subject of David, Greg, I, I kind of a follow up question to Donna's um, about her meeting David in the in the oh. gift shop. Can you oh, confirm uh, confirm or deny if David has the warmest hands ever? <laughs> wow! Because I, Donna I says he has the can... warmest hands ever. Wow. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. You don't know? I, I can neither confirm nor deny. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, nothing, nothing is stuck out. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyway, so you were considering doing Drive. Interesting. Well, you know, there were a couple of people in the band that wanted to do it. Okay. Uh, I, I'll admit right now, I was not one of them. Okay. Uh, so... That that was my bias only because, uh, well, well, two reasons. Uh, the first being it was one of Ben's most famous songs, right? And and obviously Ben wasn't going to be you know joining us. You know, not that that's necessarily a problem because you know Rick was the writer of the song, so there's you know there's a, certainly a valid reason to have him sing it. In fact, he sang. Just what I needed, right. which is a you know a famous Ben vocal. Right. So so, uh, but you know the other the other thing about Drive. Well, sort of one of the main issues for me is is that there's so many keyboards on it, and even when the Cars used to play it on tour, we used sequencers to mm -hmm. play along to. Mm -hmm. keyboard wise to add extra keyboard parts mm -hmm. and uh it, we sort of made a conscious decision for the rock and roll hall of fame not to use any you know sequencers or any like sort of like backing tracks it was all going to be live nice and so you know then we talked about maybe try and drive and i was like well you know if we do it you know are we going to use sequencers everybody sort of agreed okay no sequencers and then when we tried it at rehearsal it, it became pretty apparent mm. that <laughs> that <laughs> you know without doing like a radical makeover to it which basically we didn't have time to do. Right. Uh, it just wasn't going to work. So, mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of the story with Drive. Did you? I don't know if you pay much attention to all the chatter that goes on in the groups, um, but it's interesting because there was a lot of um, controversy in a sense about the idea of if the band would play Drive. You know, there are the diehard Benjamin fans that were, you know would be really offended if you did and then there's the diehards that would be really offended if you didn't and just was interesting to follow everybody yeah, we, you had the people who who even had the the idea of yes they should do it and have a hologram of benjamin on stage oh, yeah. like they did for tupac and it's like yeah, oh, come yeah, on people yeah. well <laughs> though, you know yeah i mean we kicked around Incredible. the idea of you know we thought, well, you could, Dan could play it and do, you know, have Ben's vocal track. And, you know, everyone, there was just a big concern about everyone wanted to make sure that Benjamin was going to be well represented during the induction, which I think he was. I think that. Yeah, I, I feel like he definitely was represented. Yeah. Uh, I think we all, you know, made mention. Uh, yes. Yes. You, you know, I just because we didn't do drive, I don't think there's any disrespect meant towards Ben. Agreed. If anything, I almost think the opposite. That that like as far as Ben's vocal there, you can't really replace the guy. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, so why attempt it? There was talk about you know using guest vocalists. 
and mm. it, it, and there had even been a couple of suggestions tossed in tossed out there uh of which since they didn't happen i'm not gonna <laughs> but but <laughs> i i was kind of against although after the fact i'll i'll mention this it, you know uh you know uh brandon from the killers who i thought did an incredible introduction for yes the cars. he was amazing. i thought he did i thought he did such a good job uh and i told him after the fact after after we played we were kind of let off backstage uh at the ceremony at which point we were sort of given our little statues and the things, I mean, I kind of made a joke about it at the beginning of my speech, but the things were so heavy that, <laughs> you know, I could barely lift it. And, and <laughs> it's funny how they, it seemed to me like they were like just expecting us all to like take them with us. And, and I was like, can't we, can't you like ship these? <laughs> you know, like, do we have to take? And luckily there was somebody there from our from our management company it's like can, can you know can we get these shipped back like it's not going to fit you know and I, it's going to be so heavy and i know i'm going to have trouble at airport security with this. yeah those will be those are totally weapons to the tsa yeah, they are so heavy it's it's even heavier i gotta admit than the uh the one other like little like statuette award i have which is the spaceman from oh. the MTV Awards, <laughs> yes. the, from the from the you might think the first ever uh, uh, MTV Award, yes, and that's a heavy statuette. But this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I think, is even heavier. <laughs> wow! So there, yeah. I, I mean, like I joked, but but it's but it's a good joke, so I'll repeat yeah. it because they're <laughs> they're both heavy <laughs> burdens to bear. Oh, 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 very nice. <laughs> Well, I think that you guys did a great job of honoring Ben during the ceremony, and um, yeah, it was it was really great to be there. I'm glad you enjoyed your weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> your week, thanks. I should say. No, it was it was it was it it, it actually turned out to be quite the emotional week. I've got mm -hmm. to admit. Yeah. And this is, and I'm not a guy that really uh, followed the hall of fame much to tell you the honest truth right. and and never really watched the the award shows mm -hmm. uh elliot did you know he was like yeah i watch them all you know <laughs> and he he knew like how things were you know he knew that you were going to give your speech before you played stuff like that that i didn't even know yeah and uh and and so uh but the I mean, I I started off the week, like I said, I kind of with a lot of anxiety just about our performance and our performance anxiety. There you go. Uh, <laughs> no, no pun intended. But, uh, but as the week went on, it's funny because all these all these people from the cars past started showing up, mm. uh, people that used to work for the cars and you know in different contexts and uh you know then like a couple days before the induction like you know a couple of the record company guys from rhino showed up and and uh just sort of our management our current management which is jeff kramer okay management mm -hmm. who who uh who worked with the cars probably starting back like heartbeat city tour say okay so we we've known him that long wow. and and not that the cars really need a manager because we really you know but for whatever management you know things we do need he he handles it he used to work for elliot roberts who was our manager back at the time right, uh, right. when the cars were active and then uh you know, and then when when the cars broke up, Elliot Roberts just sort of, you know, we just went our separate ways. But Jeff Kramer sort of went on to a, an illustrious management career of his own because he uh, he is the current manager of uh, Bob Dylan, Paul yes. Simon. And uh, he also, I think, 
maybe even it helps like George Harrison's estate in you know like in in some sort of like managerial capacity. I know he was like he was uh, he became good friends with George Harrison through Bob Dylan and and like that whole uh, through the traveling Wilburys era. Wow. So so Jeff was there that night, you know, at the induction and and he's been a you know, he's he's been a you know, a good friend of the cars. Yeah, that's really my, cool. From my perspective, so very cool. Well, you know, going back in time like that, um, uh -huh. thinking back even before the cars, um, well of course you started wow. out as an aardvark, right? That's right. You were that an was aardvark. my first band. Wow, yes. now we're way back. Yeah. Well, we won't keep you all the way back no, at that point. It's like the Wayback Machine, right? Sherman, <laughs> yeah. Sherman and Mr. B. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but I do want to jump a, a little bit ahead of your aardvark days to your days as a rabbit, specifically Richard and the rabbits. Yes, yes. That's that was... That there's not much out there about Richard and the rabbits. No, there's there's a lot more info on Captain Swing, which was the band. Oh, we know Captain. With that had Rick and Ben and Elliot. That was like the year right before the Cars. Yes. But the but the band they had before that was Richard and the Rabbits, right. of which of which I was a member. Rick and Ben were both in the band, so there's like three fifths of the Cars. Right. And then, uh, let's see, who else was in the band? Uh, Ron Riddle on drums, and and this guy, a friend of mine, Fuzby, was a guitar player. Uh, Fuzby, Dave who... Morris. That's right, yeah, yeah. And, and Fuzby actually, uh, strangely enough, Fuzby was there at the, uh, in Cleveland at the induction. I saw Elaine. Yeah, oh, she posted cool. a picture of of her, uh, her and him. I think, or maybe yeah, she, now, it was you and him. I can't remember. But she posted. Yeah, yeah, could it could have been either. Could have been either. It, Fuzby's. He's he's one of those characters that that I that keeps popping out of in and out of my time frame, and <laughs> and I've known him since I went to Berkeley when I the first year. That uh, out of high school, that I went moved to Boston to go to Berkeley. He was there that year, and we were, I think, we were roommates, or basically. Uh, and and somehow we've and he's a an incredible musician, fantastic guitar player, but also like an amazing like uh, piano player, keyboard player himself. He plays like flute and stuff and and write songs and sings and and uh, uh, what's my point? Oh, oh, and not <laughs> only that, but 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 he also played guitar on one of Rick's albums. He plays on uh, Time Bomb on This Side of Paradise. Nice. Mm. Uh, but but oh, yeah, the, the funny thing about if you if you don't mind me rambling, I'll tell Please, you. Please, no. So, so somehow he ended up at the Rock Hall of Fame because somehow or other he has become friends with Paul Allen, one of the founders of Microsoft. Okay. And and somehow Fuzby gets invited out to like Paul Allen's yacht to play <laughs> guitar with Paul Allen, like for fun. <laughs> and so he goes out on Paul Allen's yacht and they and they, you know, play music and and, you know, and and so he gets this call from Paul Allen, like two days before the induction ceremony, or he gets a call from Paul Allen's secretary, I should be more specific, that says, oh, Paul uh, has two tickets to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony, but is unable to attend. Would you like them? <laughs> and and Fuzz, Fuzzby just happened to be like an hour and a half's drive away at his mom's house in Ohio. <laughs> so so there he was. He got two free tickets uh, wow. and ended up being in this like table, pretty much like right behind our table. Awesome. So so it's just it's just like this crazy coincidence. Was that the first time you'd seen him in a while, or do you keep in touch? 
Uh, no, I do keep in touch. Nice. And and probably I'm trying to remember the last time I saw him. Uh, probably the last time I was in L.A. He usually and it was probably uh, it was probably at a Todd run. I was probably playing in Todd's band. Yeah. In in this past December. And I think he came to one. In fact, I know he came to one of the L.A. shows. He nice. came to the uh, he came to we played the Canyon Club. Uh, nice. Not, you know, outside L.A., out in the suburbs there. Hmm. Uh, and he came to that show. Oh. So he was in Richard and the Rabbits. So what kind of music did, did Richard and the Rabbits play? I mean, Milkwood, which was before that for, for Rick and Ben, was, you know, pretty uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, acoustic vocal. Yeah. Stuff. What was Richard and the Rabbits like? Richard and the Rabbits was a little, it was more electric, almost almost like steely danish in a way okay. like m more it was not as simple yet musically as the cars were so like closer to cars, Captain swing like more of a captain swing sound because they're kind of yeah 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 okay maybe captain swing was almost even a little jazzier though okay so you know, you know what i mean so it, it, the rabbits it, was kind of the step just below just below yeah yeah it was life. it was like an electric band it was like a five-piece band like the cars became okay uh because i was playing i guess keyboards i think that was i think richard and the rabbits was really the first band i ever played keyboards in nice and i had i had an old clavinet <laughs> uh and and i can't remember what else i had i might have had like an old a Sound City electric piano at the time. You weren't doing slide whistle in this one? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Kazoo? But all, although I do think of, like, I'm in touch with your world as maybe being the debut of the slide whistle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. checking. <laughs> yeah. Um, are there any recordings? It's, for it's, the, it's the Spike Jones influence. Oh, know? my gosh. I, you <laughs> yeah. know what? And, I meant to tell and, you. And Bonzo Dog Band. I don't know that one, but my kids, we love Spike Jones at our house. Oh, my, yeah. Oh, my gosh. My kids can perform and do all sorts of Spike Jones. We love them. Yeah. Yeah. My dad actually had a Spike Jones album. Yeah. And so I, I remember that when I was a kid. But I, I you know, I did love that music. And, and I do like kind of novelty records and yeah. and comedy music sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> well, so that's. That's kind of right up my alley. As evidenced by your stint with Martin Mull, right? There, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Are there any recordings from Richard and the Rabbits floating around anywhere? Yes, there are. That's interesting. Uh, we made a couple <laughs> of demo tapes, I think maybe at Northern Studios, the same place where we uh, did the, uh, the the demo tape, uh, the, the first Cars uh, demo tape that uh, has... Uh, just what I needed and you're all I've got tonight and stuff on it. Yeah. We did a whole, that first Cars demo tape, we, we probably played like 11 or 12 songs and, and like the two that, uh, and they were all basically played live to two track tape. Nice. Uh, if I don't even know if there was any overdubbing on, on those, on that particular batch of uh, songs, but that, that had, the just what I needed that started getting radio airplay uh, yes. that Max Dan, that Max Ann started playing on BCN, and then Oedipus started playing it on what? It was called WTBS, but it was the MIT station. But then, late, a years later, the Turner Broadcast System bought the call letters. WTBS because oh. <laughs> because of Turner Broadcast System. Yeah. Right. Yes, and so now the MIT station is something else. I don't I don't know what it is, hmm. but but that's that's just an odd little story that has. Yeah, I didn't realize Oedipus was playing this, you guys before. Yeah, playing the cars yeah. before the cars. Yeah, he was. He definitely was. Um, so he was he was maybe like right after WBCN. He was maybe like the next guy. Nice. The second guy, or or there might have been a couple other people at BCN that played it first, or I mean after Maxanne, because I know she was the first one to start playing. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, 
the, then she started playing it every day and it's like wow this is great the uh the richard and the rabbit stuff um you know as you can imagine i'm just going to throw this out there if you ever you know want anybody to hear those <laughs> yeah maybe, yeah i'll, I'll be happy to, to take a listen well listen. i'll have to track down and see if, <laughs> see what i have kicking around <laughs> yeah just uh send I, those files. I may i may only have cassette copies i'm not sure what i personally own well, um, I I assume, you know, Rick's got the uh, whatever <laughs> whatever version the master tapes were. Let me tell you, Greg, I, we we assume here on the Night Thoughts podcast, we assume that Rick has everything in that vault that we know exists, and we've made yeah. many offers to come and organize that vault for him, but he has not <laughs> contacted us yet. <laughs> Yeah, I'll totally organize it. Yep, Dave will walk the dog yeah. while I put labels yep. on stuff. I will do that. Yeah. Now, this, so, now, see, speaking of Rick, that was a funny thing, speaking of the Hall of Fame, because I'll just mention his uh, recent separation or recent acknowledgement of a separation with him and Paulina. Okay. And, and he, like, none of us knew at the time we only found we only found out about it. I found out about it just like everybody else when it showed up whatever when Paulina oh. announced it on her Facebook message. Wow. There was like there was like not an not not an inkling uh, at the time. Wow. So I'll just toss that out. Interesting. Okay. So <laughs> moving uh, moving ahead a little bit, uh, this is like a "This is your life," Greg Hawks. Yes, yeah. yes. As we go, okay. M- moving, uh, you know, moving a little bit forward. When when the cars first became uh, became the cars, um, I'll give you a little background history on this. No one in in the Fanorama knew there was a keyboard player before you. And th- the way this came about was there was a T-shirt that somebody had bootlegged and had been out there for many years. And it had a picture of the band. Um, I think it said playing at the rat. And mm-hmm. people are like, wow, you know, look at Greg Hawks in this picture. I mean, is it was he, he didn't have a mustache. He looks kind of different. Was he younger there? Is that just a bad picture of Greg? And you know, we went on for years with this. And finally, I think it was last year. Maybe a year and a half two ago, years ago yeah. Uh, yeah. two years ago, um, somebody had put the original promo picture, you know, because all we had seen was this grainy T-shirt image. And they oh, put wow. the original promo picture on there. And it's very clear. It's like, OK, that isn't Greg Hawks. It was, Who yeah, is it was that? for auction on eBay. Remember? So yeah. It, on eBay. it was Danny. Danny. Yeah. Uh, Danny Lewis. Yeah. And so okay, Danny Lewis. That's right. Yeah. So Dan, uh, Danny was the keyboard player in Captain Swing. Yes. So he was he was a holdover from that band, which we knew but, uh, we knew about Danny and Captain Swain. Oh, okay. And okay. then, but then everybody assumed that you were right in the cars from the get go. Yeah. So when this clear picture surfaced, we were like, "What the heck? Who is yeah. yeah. that?" So, and I, so, I, you know, I had I had tweeted Elliot and said, "Hey, Elliot, who's this guy in here who's not Greg?" And it was Elliot who said, "Oh, that's Danny Lewis." Um, in, in a response. So we were just like, you know, uh, th- this is like a, 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 a secret hiding in plain sight that, that yeah. nobody had ever figured out in the fandom. But well, I, I, I was just kind of yeah, wondering, I, how did how did that go down? I mean, Danny was in, know, the, I, in the band. The and, truth, to tell you the truth, I am not not sure to tell you the truth. Uh, well, and, were you, and, can I... So you already knew the band. You had been in the Richard and the Rabbits. Then you yeah. went and did you uh, went with Martin Mull and and did that, and they kind of morphed into Captain Swing. Right. So at what point, if you don't mind me asking, so straightforwardly, at what yeah. point were you invited to be in the Cars after it had already formed, or was it before? And Danny was kind of holding your spot until you were free. I what, think how did that come about. I I think what you just said. It seems to me like Danny was sort of holding my spot, okay, so to speak. Now I can I do know this much that there's there's that a lot of people point to there was a show in New Hampshire, the Pease Air Force Base show, January first. What would it have been? Nineteen seventy-seven. Well, it was as New Year's the, Eve. the first 
is the first Cars show. Right. So I I did not perform in that. Right. And I think Danny did it, and yeah. then da Danny did uh, I think a couple other shows maybe, but they were billed as the Cars, so the name was already there. I remember uh, Rick and Ben both coming over to visit me. Elaine and I had an apartment in Somerville at the time, uh, which is like, it's like the, the, the town right next to Cambridge, which is the town right next to Boston. Okay. So it's, it's all really part of the greater Boston area. So, so Rick and Ben came over and asked me, if, you know, you know, it was to ask me to join the band. And, and they said, yeah, it's, you know, it's the cars. It's, you know, we've got David from the Modern Lovers is going to play drums. Uh, Elliot, who I already knew from Captain Swing, because I had met, you know, I, I had met Elliot before. Right. Uh, and, and so I already, you know, knew, knew him, et cetera. And, and so to me, they were just sort of, I didn't really ask that much about, Oh, what about the other guy from Captain Swing? You know, I right, you know, okay. I I was sort of like, well, you know. In fact, I think I went to see the band play, maybe even with Danny being the keyboard player. Yeah, I think I remember you saying that in an interview. And at some and point. it it might have been at the Bell Boy, which was like some club on the South Shore, this the, like the suburbs of Boston, okay. like like an hour, a half hour below south of Boston. I seem to have a vague recollection of going to see them and he was playing keyboards and then thinking, OK, you know, I, yeah, I could do that. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> and then had a had a sort of an idea. And and but then I think because it was pretty quick, because my first show with with them, with the cars, was sometime in February of 77. Okay. And and it might have been at the Paradise, not not the Paradise, uh, uh, the, rat? the Rat. Okay. The Rat. Because uh, there was even a, uh, uh, a little mention of it in, in the paper. Uh, there was a writer, Jimmy I... Isaacs, James I Isaacs. Okay. Actually, he was a friend of Max Sands, but he wrote for the local one of the local papers, Boston papers. It was either the Boston Phoenix, I think it was the Boston Phoenix. So anyway, there there was actually, and he wrote like a weekly local music column, and he actually mentioned in his column that the cars were going to be playing. I think at the rat with new keyboardist Greg Hawks or something. Oh. And I th and then I was like pretty impressed like wow <laughs> they even got like a mention in the paper like wow <laughs> that's that's like a good sign that's a good omen. <laughs> and for what and for whatever reason you know things like that you know just happened with the cars the fact that he got you know whether Rick got it in, you know, being friends with Jimmy I Isaacs or, or, you know, or whether Max Sand mentioned something, something to him. But somehow there was like a blurb, a little blurb in the paper. And I was like, wow, that, you know, that's impressive. And then uh, the, the, the local radio airplay definitely made such a big difference. The fact that we were getting, you know, I've said it before, but the fact that we got radio airplay, uh, like we could play someplace, uh, even like a club out in the suburbs, and you know people wouldn't really know that many of our songs because first of all, most of them you know were already songs that Rick had written. We did more cover songs back then, but when we finally played like just what I needed, you could tell. Wow, every, everybody would sort of you know get up and like there was you could tell that there was that recognition yeah. that they had heard this song on the radio and it's like wow oh okay i know this song nice nice that probably felt good huh yeah no it was great and especially <laughs> uh you know like for instance i had just been in a band you know a couple of years with rick and ben before and nothing like that had ever happened so it was definitely an encouraging sign yeah you could feel the difference
Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, Greg, I kind of wanted to go a little bit more forward in time of sure. um, the, the time period of after the car's initial breakup and some, some of the things that you've done uh, individually. Uh, of course, I already mentioned Niagara Falls, which you put out in 83, I think it was. Yeah. That sounds um, about right. Um, which is, uh, which is an awesome, awesome album. I was, uh, I had that baby on order before it was even released. Um, the, uh, but the, the one thing that really is in, intrigued me, um, in, in recent times are fierce Tibetan gods and your <laughs> beat, your Beatles uke. Um, oh. so, uh, first off with, with the Beatles uke, you know, I, I just loved how you layered all the, all the uh, different ukes in into that, and uh, I was wondering, have, have you ever considered doing the Cars uke? Because I know you've played a lot of different Cars songs. Yeah, it's funny. No, you know, it's funny. No, I haven't. I, I've, because uh, uh, yeah, I, I do use. I occasionally, it, uh, for those who might hear this who wouldn't know otherwise, I occasionally have done solo ukulele shows and and I'll perform several Cars songs usually. You might think. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Tonight you know, She my, Comes. Yeah, my ukulele versions and I sing them <laughs> and stuff. But to do like a, like a more instrumental like, like I did like with the Beatles thing, uh, it's funny, but that it hadn't occurred to me. Uh, to do it like in that fashion, but well, we're voting you know, for you. yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> we think you should do it as your podcast host. Awesome. Well, fierce, fierce Tibetan gods is another one of those um, uh, great secrets uh, among the the fanorama. People just didn't know that that they existed, and I, I don't even know how I got wind. Um, of fierce yeah. Tibetan gods, but uh, <laughs> just to give a little background, you, you were in that with Perry Geyer, who was yeah, yeah, um, yeah. an engineer at Synchro Sound. That's so right. there was your there was your connection. Can you kind of tell me how that all evolved and came yeah, about? Really, the the Perry is Perry Geyer, like you said, is is uh, I've known him boy a long time, uh, but back since the Cars era, and he was in a an electronic band called Manufacturer, just like a uh, a two-person like synth band, and so Perry's uh, uh, it, it w has his own studio, and and uh, the Fierce Tibetan Gods really was a studio project, and and uh, it it sort of consisted of people who were sort of hanging around the studio, either working on other on other projects. Uh, or, or uh, well, basically that was kind of it, <laughs> and 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 it was sort of Perry's friends, and and he would just sort of pull us together, and he might like it. Usually started with Perry would would come up with a couple of these funny like loops, and and he would like uh, sample these loops, and and start building up these tracks. And then basically, if I was sort of in the neighborhood, or if I, you know, was it, it, you know, happened to drop into the studio, he'd say, "Okay, I've got a couple tracks. You, you know, you know, just waiting for you. You know, you know, put on, put on a couple of parts." And so then I would, and then this other, you know, friend of Perry's, uh, John, would come in and like put on some guitar parts. And then there was there was all always well there was this guy Andrew Wolf, uh, who would who would come in uh actually his he's been he had been around boston for years he used to work at that radio station wbcn the same radio station that maxan satori worked at when she first started playing the cars nice. so anyway uh, andrew had this like very proper sort of english accent uh voice uh he you know he was he was british and and it moved to the states but uh he had retained his accent so to speak and it was like you know a real good sort of like radio english accent voice and he would you know either recite things or come yes up with these, 
or or else come up with these funny lyrics for uh, for for various uh, singers that Perry would would have been working with or or knew through the studio, and and so it was really not not really a cohesive group as such, but it it was you know much more of a you know a kind of put together studio project, and 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 Perry really you know would sort of encourage you know uh what do you call it uh contributions i guess is yeah. the word i'm looking for you know so th- and and like i might be in and put my parts down and some uh, other evening you know then he'd be working with one of the singers or with one of the other musicians uh so the on the Andrew was the person. There's a lot of vocal narration in there. He's the voice yeah, talent yeah, behind those right. parts because that's is, that's one of my that, favorite things about it. Yeah, that's um, that's that's really pretty much all Andrew. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really his contribution. His his like poetry, and and also funny funny Andrew in a funny way was sort of the glue for the whole for that whole project. Uh, and I, I can't even remember how it started, but I think it was because of Andrew. So in, <laughs> anyway, in, that's my story, and I'm sticking uh, to in, it. In, nine, in 1997, they put out Dreams of Earth and Sky, which you're listed as as a, a contributing musician on. But okay. then in 2003, with Forbidden Frequencies, mm-hmm. am I correct in assuming that you took on a majority of the, of the, um, the, the singing on that one? Oh, wait. Oh boy, boy! I may have on some of the songs. You're right about that. Yeah, it's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. when I first listened to it, I was like, oh, that's you know, that's Gr- that's Greg Hawks. Yeah, and yeah, my yeah. my connection so, that I made was was after listening to years of the Cars and hearing your background vocals you for that to you know pop voice. out at me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I. You're right. I I'd, I'd kind of forgotten about that, but you're right. You know, that's uh, the forbidden frequencies. That's, that's right, because I, I did, I did sort of do some funny lyrical things <laughs> for the for the for the fierce Tibetan gods project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the other thing that I really thought was cool about that time period was where the, you guys were doing these virtual um, tours or virtual concerts through. Um, oh right, that's website right. with Second that's Life, right. that's and I was right. like, in, that's right. <laughs> I think those those, those were again, interesting. Again, you know, I think it was Andrew who set that up because he had like a whole like, you know, a whole like second life online personality and Yeah. You know, that's that's right. He was he was the guy that set set that all up. Yeah. I I I uh have a a picture of yours um and it's uh, you're, you're, I think it's. You also did ones with just where you're doing the uke, uh, the uke shows, correct? Did I do one? Well, Maybe I think you did because I, I seem to recall um, you doing it's it and possible. then also talking with the audience. But the funny thing about those was was that you know the the, the avatar would never move along, <laughs> you know, with the music. So it was it was kind of funny. But uh, I, I enjoyed it. I oh, would yeah. watch. I don't. I have no idea how I you know got turned on to it. But I remember watching one. Um, live uh, as, wow. it, as it went on so it was really cool but th- yeah, those were basically me, it was just sort of something that you know like like something that I just kind of walked into frankly uh, you know like like with a second life or the that that type it was it would have been Andrew because he was like into that whole like virtual world so yeah. he's like well how about if I set up a virtual concert like, okay I don't care. <laughs> we'll do. There is one on okay, YouTube. Let's do it. <laughs> if you so, if you look for it, you'll you'll find it. Somebody somebody's wow. posted it on YouTube. Wow! Yikes! <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think I'll be looking for that. <laughs> but that's that's just me. <laughs> well, you know, it's not you. It's virtual you. So yeah, you know, that's okay. true. That's true. <laughs> One of the things I love, Greg, you know, you're saying that you sort of stumbled into that project, but you, I love how involved you are in other people's projects or just even performing with um, other artists and contributing um, whether it's cars related or not. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm particularly thinking of the Aquabats. Uh, oh, I love the Aquabats. 
I love them so much. <laughs> They're so much one of my favorite bands of all time. <laughs> and and I got in, into them from from my son, from Ian, because yes. he was a fan. <laughs> and and from his friend Adam Amoroso, so I've got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, and and uh, and yeah, and I've been in touch with those guys ever since. Uh, boy, I can't remember ever since. <laughs> but uh, you know, now like you know, I always go see them if whenever they played in Boston, and if you know, and I, whenever I get sort of like. Uh, LA area I try to try to stay in touch nice well and then you did like uh, letters to Cleo you worked with them oh yeah um, yeah yeah well, and even like yeah. children's programming you did a was that show called Yo Yo Gabba Gabba Yo Gabba Gabba, Yo Gabba, oh, Gabba? Yeah. Now, now see Yo Gabba Gabba that's that's got the Aquabats connection because right. Christian who is who is M the MC Bat Commander the lead singer <laughs> of the Aquabats is also uh, was also one of the producers of uh, Yo Gabba Gabba. Nice. And yeah, I I went out and 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 taped an episode. Uh, right. Which and is yeah, so cool. it was great. It yeah. was great. It was so much fun. I love it. I and love so how you stay involved like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun <laughs> to do. That was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> But <clears throat> Greg, I noticed that, um, and also the, a more recent <laughs> band, uh, uh, Eddie Japan, I played oh. with. But, uh, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, yeah, and we did some Cars songs, uh, and I kind of co-produced. They did, they did, uh, uh, like a record. I still say record, but or an album of songs, a collection of songs, uh, last year that I kind of co-produced. Or helped out uh, on, and uh, then then sat in with them at a couple of their shows last year. Nice, very nice. So, uh, Greg, I noticed that um, recently you uh, had a lot of uh, memorabilia from the cars that you, that you put up for auction and so forth, and it's oh wait and, and, and wait, <laughs> did you buy some? I I, I tried. <laughs> I tried, um, but the, you know it's always seemed like you you were the person in the band who who held on to a lot of things. Like, um, for example, when I contacted you back in two thousand one about that using ants in your pants, you ended up sending me um, a cassette copy of Heartbeat City and wow. uh, uh, one of the Candio Cloisonne uh, pins. And so you oh, just wow. always seem to be the guy who's held on to stuff. Is there yeah. is there anything that you, that you've kept? You just you know, you want to hold on to from days gone I, past. It, well, some things. I mean, I've still got a lot of stuff. So, which means that basically I've still got a lot of stuff to either like sell or or give away, <laughs> depending on what it is, mm. uh, or depending on my mood maybe at the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it's part of it. Part of it. Uh, that recent batch. Part of it came about because of the whole Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing. Because they started asking for donations, and then I was thinking, "Gee, what do I have to donate to the?" Uh, so, for instance, one of the first things that came to mind was like gold or platinum records which I don't really, you know, display. I've got, I, I will admit, I've got like four or five up on my wall uh, downstairs, uh, sort of like in my music slash storage room. Uh, but <laughs> so anyway, I brought up that with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame person. And, and they said, strangely enough, we only, you know, go for uh, like gold records if it's a last resort. And and hmm. and the thing that they were the most interested in was a clothing, you know that that you like wore <laughs> like on stage or you know that you know was used like on an album cover or something, uh, or instruments. Fair enough. Uh, and and so then then yeah, I came up with like a jacket 
and donated a, an ARP Omni keyboard, which was actually probably used on the first four Cars albums. Wow. Wow. Although, although all, uh, you know, I've got to admit that it's not in working condition, but nevertheless, there it is. And it still had a, a Cars set list from the Shake It Up tour taped onto it. So I think oh, it's, fantastic. It's, it's got that bit of historical value. But yeah. it, you know, it, it was used on the first album. It does that whole like sweep sound at the beginning of moving in stereo. The, ah. I can't even whistle. <laughs> we know what you mean, though. <laughs> yeah. So so basically, the Rock and yeah. Roll Hall of Fame would have no interest in my Woolman skating rink ticket stub from 79. <laughs> well, well, see, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> and but and and other things there are other smaller items that I did donate to them that uh they did not use for the new inductees uh what do you call it display display which is okay you know because uh uh well I sent like like uh tour passes like laminate tour passes nice. I had probably about f maybe four from different cars tours uh what else? Oh, I sent them. Uh, I had a uh, uh, a video treatment, like a proposal, but like a typed up with with like little pictures of the proposal for the video for both Drive and for Hello Again. Ah, oh, awesome! So Drive, uh -huh. you know, the proposal from Tim Hutton or his company or whatever. Uh, and so those I donated to the Hall of Fame. They probably put Very this in cool. their library, I bet. Yeah. I bet yeah, they did. Yeah. That's really in cool. In fact, they said that there are even, because I, I got a message from one of the people that said they're, they're actually uh, uh, doing a new exhibit on music and TV. So, right. uh, you know, so it fits in. Nice. You know, the... the, the Oh, oh! The, speaking of TV, the other the other thing I had was like uh, when we when we played on Saturday Night Live, I still had the schedule for the day that they gave us from NBC. So it was like you know whatever you know two o'clock sound check two thirty yes, blah, yes. blah 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 you know <laughs> seven fifth seven fifteen you know or whatever time you know nine fifteen. mayor koch introduces the cars yes i think um, that's on display <laughs> the, the whole schedule was there and... yeah wow that, that's on display um i think that billy just posted that on facebook she took oh, a, a uh, picture of it and post, posted oh, it on facebook nice. yes oh nice that's really nice, cool. nice you know you mentioned about clothes and um <laughs> i'm actually very curious about um and dave this doesn't count as a real question <laughs> I, Greg, I want to know. I I am so fascinated with how much clothes coordination and sharing there seem to be in the band. I'm particularly thinking about because right now I'm wearing a black T-shirt with a white square with an arrow through it, geometric design that you wore like in '77, wow. '78. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I, I know. Have, Okay, so you had the black one with the white. Benjamin yeah, had yeah. the white one with the black. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you guys that's did right. a lot of coordinating of stuff like that. And I love it. So what was the deal? Did you guys go shopping together? Did you, like, Ben show up in the okay. white shirt and you go, hey, I dig that. I want to get one. Occasionally, we <laughs> went shopping together, I got to admit. <laughs> and you had, like, the, and, several that and, were like and, that. And, and... <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And and I mean that whole like black and white thing, you know, that that was that really was sort of like David's like art direction background and his sort of uh you know, his he, you know, kind of he crafting was crafting like, the look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just thought it was funny then, how like you there would be like the same shirt, but it would seem particularly I mean like um they had the same guitar straps, um, like right. the lightning bolt. I mean, so there was Elliot and Ben had the same jacket. There was some of that stuff. But you and Ben really kind of seemed to have several coordinating outfits there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I. But yeah, like you say, sometimes we actually did 
do sh <laughs> shopping outings together. So, you know, awesome. if there were a couple of variations, we'd get them both. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, and then I do remember a lot of times going like to some like shop and then like Rick would be showing me some jacket and I was like, oh, this would be a good jacket for you. And then I, of course, I'd look at the price tag on it. And I was like, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> you know, because, you know, I got, you know, we're, you know, Rick's much more of a clothes horse than I was. <laughs> Rick and David both. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd say, you know, the two of them in particular. <laughs> then Ben, then Elliot, then me. Then you at the end. I'm, I'm like at the bottom of the list. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. There's a trivia question for you. Who's yeah. on the bottom of the fashion list of the cars? Yeah. We know now. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, well, and I know you spoke at, um, you know, obviously I, mm, I'm a huge Benjamin fan. Benjamin uh -huh. hooked me uh -huh. into the, Yeah, yeah. Into the and game. rightly so, yeah. Um, and I know you spoke at his memorial service. Yes. Um, which was amazing. Do you mind if I ask that you a was, little bit about that? Sure. Go right ahead. You know, that was the only other time I'd been to the, uh, to the, the, the Rock, Rock Hall of Fame Museum. That was because uh, David and I went out there for that. Yeah. For Ben's mem like memorial service or some right. kind of service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Ben that they they had like his family or I think basic basically his family had like rented like one of the rooms there. The, yeah, the Foster Theater. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and, and so and David and David and I drove out with. A friend of ours, Brian Scars, who was in the crew. Okay. He was one of the car's crew. Nice. And we all drove out together, you know, went out there. Um, how long had it been since you had seen him? Had it been since that final interview or were you in? Yeah, the final, much? that last, that last interview was it. You know, the one that's on videotape. And that was, that was pretty close to when he passed away. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was, it seems like he died within like, what, six months of taping that. I don't even know if it was that long. No, it was. Within six, it was, sooner? It, 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 quicker? A lot, quite a bit sooner, yeah. It was, okay. It was sooner, yeah. but um, yeah. prior to that, the final interview, had you been much in contact with him? I mean, I, I, I'm assuming you under, you knew he was sick, had you... Yeah, you know, I until we did that interview and I actually saw him, I did not know the extent of his illness. After that, when I, I saw him, when I saw him, I knew that he was not going to recover. Yeah, yeah. You know, before I thought, well, you know, who, you know, you know, just because I wasn't in touch that much. Right. Right. Uh, and and I did not know quite the extent of his. Uh, uh, the reality of the did, situation. Huh? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. After yeah, well, there was a picture of. I mean, that I, I recall it, seeing you, know, you and David and Benjamin together, maybe taken in the '90s or something like that. Uh huh. I know so, that I know that I went to see him play at the Paradise a couple of times when he played with his other band, like with. Uh, or band. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. big and people. So it's probably at one of those shows. David and I may have gone together to see one of those shows. Uh, um, but but yeah, I knew that he was ill, but I did not know the extent. You know, I did not know how far it had progressed. Right. And I don't know. I mean, my recollection of that whole interview is I felt personally, I felt like I. I was like sort of in shock and like barely talked. To tell yeah. you the honest truth, I've not watched the interview since we did it. Really? I've seen I've seen like pictures from it stills and maybe have come across like little clips, but only kind of by accident. It's nothing that I've se would seek out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just felt so bad, you know, about about Benjamin. them. Yeah. You know, from uh, from a fan perspective, though, Greg, I can tell you that in watching that interview, I see uh -huh. a group of guys who are who are recollecting some great times within their career. I mean, that's how it came off to me. 
Um, yeah. Elliot does a lot of talking, Richta and uh, David, David, does. David bring, brings up a lot of things and, and you too. So that's, uh, it, uh-huh. it, it isn't really a, a, a sad interview for me. It's, it's just, you know, guys bringing up all these old stories and, and, and remembering the good times they had. Uh-huh. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, I'm not, From a different perspective. yeah, it's, it is difficult to watch, um, because of Ben, but even at that, he, you know, he's a gamer. I mean, he smiles. Yeah. He, he no, he certainly put and, on a brave face. Yeah, yeah. Um, so not, I'm not asking uh, to dig up dirt on why the band broke up. Um, uh-huh. But after the band did separate, was there much contact between all of you guys? Uh, or just some of you were more in touch sort than of others? Sort of some of it sort of some of us off and on i mean now that i think of it i guess i stayed in touch with rick the most at least at first at least at first because i ended up playing on almost all of his solo albums Mm -hmm. yeah you worked really closely Uh, with him a lot so i did stay in touch with him then then let me think at some point you know, it, it must have been before the whole, like, New Cars episode and stuff. I was probably, you know, I probably ended up, well, you know, that whole, well, it might have, I might as well talk about that since it just came up to, on my mind. Uh, you know, it, it, that, that whole thing started as an effort to reunite the cars, to, to have it be a cars, you know, right. uh, pro- project. And it got, you know, to a certain, you know, it, it proceeded under that assumption for a little while. So, so then it, it, at some point it became apparent that it wasn't going to happen. So then, then, you know, it became sort of like, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, so, so anyway, so Elliot, <laughs> it, it was basically... Sorry. Elliot was pushing the idea of like, okay, well, if Rick doesn't want to do it, it could still be the cars without Rick. And, and, and I was, you know, first, you know, thinking, well, no, it can't, you know, it, it, it. And so I was on that side of the fence, I got to admit, for a long time. Okay. And, 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 uh, so Elliot was so, you know, I got, and well, you know, you just say what you want to say. You don't have to. Uh, we're not digging up dirt here. <laughs> What's that? I, I, no, I'm just, I'm well, just I, I, reliving this for myself. Yeah. You probably all know this no, as much ahead. as I do. Or uh, well, uh, well, uh, a question or on do that. Do you Greg, want me that... to skip ahead to a different, you know, time frame or, no, or well, what? Should well, I, I mean, I, I should I just keep talking, rambling? Well, I, 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 I have a question about that that uh, sure, that time sure. frame though, Greg. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the the studio um, songs that that you did for for the new cars, um, uh-huh. not tonight, warm, and I can't remember the third one off the top of my uh, head. Uh, uh, more, I want more. More, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Warm, the song warm, um, which I absolutely love. There, it kind of had it kind of had a fierce Tibetan gods vibe for me uh-huh. in a certain part. Was uh-huh. was that something well, see, that you had that you had brought in from ideas you'd had before? Yes, it is exactly. I nailed it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. you, you guessed it. That's right. Extra points for Dave. Uh, uh, <laughs> the other one more was something that Todd had sort of kind of proposed. He sort of did that one on his own as like. You know, here's here's a possible song. Yeah. Uh, you know the thing that I liked about Todd's, uh, like like when when he did like the vocal on that, he came from a much more like Ben perspective than a Rick perspective. I thought. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, that's that's that that's my observation. Well, you know, the, the the new cars is a controversial topic, as I'm sure you. I'm sure it is. You I'm know. sure it is. But you know, you I know, think it, I, I think in general, you know, Elliot said in an interview one time that um, he, you know, for him these were 
these songs are part of his musical legacy. He, you know, he, he wrote these um, guitar solos. I mean, it's, it's part of his history. It's part of his music. And he wanted to, to play those songs. And, you know, if, if for no other reason, we can love the new cars because Greg and Elliot are in the new cars. You know, I mean, it's, it, it, it uh -huh. is. It's your guys' music. It's, it's your part of your legacy. Um, it's unfortunate and, that it, and, and it's what you brought to the car's sound as, you know, as Donna says, uh -huh. you, you, you being the secret sauce of mm -hmm. the cars, mm -hmm. you know, Elliot's, Elliot's guitar work is, is very much a part of the car's sound as well. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But, so I, you know, I, I've, I've got mixed feelings about it. Uh, yeah. you know, I always did. I was, you know, yeah. For, you know, so, so that's, you know, but on the other hand, it did get me into a uh, working relationship with Todd that, that has right. been continued to this day. Uh, to you know, fruit, so huh? it's, 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 uh, and that must you know, been... it's, it's, it's just that particular circumstance you know, as whatever people think about that, for my own thing, it just opened up a lot of other opportunities. So it's a good transition so, thing. But so, so is yes. that is that what got you back into a, a close to Elliot again? Because we were kind of talking about, you know, after the band broke up, you you and Rick continued to work together for quite a while, and then you kind of went into the new car. So was that your your moving closer yeah. back to Elliot? Yeah, I think I think it was because Elliot had been doing the whole like. Credence Clearwater right. Revisited right. band for like, I don't know, for a long time. Yeah. Uh, he'd been doing that and, and he was sort of like done with that. And so. He you know, toured with Hall and Oates for a little bit too, because I saw him, saw him oh, with Hall and Oates. Right. That's right. That's I think right. that was in the late 90s. Yeah, yeah. So then that got you back into connection with him. And how about David? Had you been. Yeah. David, David, I, I mean, I, I, I stay in touch with David from time to time. David is even more of a recluse than I am. <laughs> 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 like, uh, that's, I don't know if that's, I mean, I, I, I do like going out and, and, and I've enjoyed, you know, traveling and performing. Yeah. As much as I have been the last several years, you seem to stay uh, busy. Yeah, yeah, and 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 in a funny and in a lot of ways, I've come to enjoy it more than I did during the cars like heyday, so to speak. Hmm. Uh, Why is that? And, you, think? And I, you know, I don't know. Do, you know, when the cars, I was I the thing that I loved the most about being in the cars at the time was making records. Yeah. That was that's that was really what I loved. I loved studio being work. In the studio. Loved like watching albums grow from like, you know, you know, from putting down like little click tracks or just count offs and, you know, doing basic tracks, doing overdubs, doing vocals. I loved that whole like process. And uh and then, so then when we went to play live, you know, for me with the cars, the, I, there was always a little bit about, yeah, but it's, you know, it, it sounds okay, but it's not as good as the record. Uh, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, and and it took me like a long time to appreciate the fact that, yeah, but live port performances are not necessarily about recreating the record. I think okay. it took me a long time to appreciate that. Yeah, but you know, right, that like now the perception out there, I mean, one of the things that people talk about with the cars is their ability to recreate their records from the stage. I mean, you guys, you guys were so tight, precise, you nailed it. I mean, yeah, yeah. but, but now, yeah, now see, uh, th there was there was sort of a crossover point though and it was when we started using all the sequencers and ah, stuff live okay, okay. if so it would have been like heartbeat city era on yeah uh that's that's more what i meant about 
you know, trying to recreate the, the heartbeat. So, like, like I, like I, like back at the beginning of the conversation about uh, the difficulty of recreating drive to get right. it to sound like the record, right? And not using, you know, sequencers or or a backing track of some sort, whether it's on the computer or, uh, you know, either you have to kind of rethink it and recreate it or. Uh, or program all of it. <laughs> or, pro or program all of it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not, you know, and, and I've been an advocate for both. Right. Being, the, being kind of the keyboard guy and kind of especially, you know, the computer guy. Yeah. Back then, I was kind of an advocate for, you know, well, you know, let's have all the sequencers and stuff. Uh, so, I, and and these days, I'm a little, I'm a little more, uh, I've gotten a little less technically <laughs> uh, uh, assessed. Dependent. <laughs> Dependent. There you go. Dependent. Yeah. Well, and do you yeah. think that that part of the struggle with touring back with the cars was just the, especially during the Heartbeat City days, sort of the, that was kind of the pinnacle maybe. I mean, I imagine you had very little privacy. I imagine it was difficult to travel. Um, you know, you get to a certain level of fame and maybe it, it gets to where it's not quite as fun. Yeah. As, you know, you kind of cross that that line of being a little too too popular yeah yeah and it's and it does start getting a little grueling yeah you know just the physical aspects of traveling and stuff yeah we we traveled all by plane really pretty much with the cars we we didn't do very much like bus tours for instance i see i see um so Greg, on the uh, back in the be beginning, we were talking about a, a time frame uh -huh. uh, for for doing our podcast. I I yeah. told you it'd be around thirty to forty five minutes, and we're we're past an hour at this uh -huh. point. So I apologize for that. But hey, uh -huh. time flies when you're having fun. Time flies um, when you're what, one last question for you? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, okay, wait. Are there? A couple of last questions. Well, I a just want to say, I just feel like I could talk to you forever. So I have <laughs> oh, loved, I, I've loved the conversation. I mean, the time has flown by for sure because I just feel yeah, like, yeah. like I could yeah. just talk forever. Okay, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> now I, now I forgot my question, even, Donna. Well, we I haven't could ask, even gone through the whole history yet. I know. No. I could, like, no. I, yeah, there's so much, but we'll have to do a part two. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, he said, so, okay. okay. Sign, All right. sign me up for a part two. So I'm part two. Hooray. Hooray. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I have, my, I have all my teen beat questions I haven't got to ask yet. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and ask Greg one of your teen beat questions, Donna, because then I'm going to ask him my teen beat question. Your teen beat. Go okay. ahead. Hey, all of the readers want to know, Greg, what's your favorite color? <laughs> Wow, uh, 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 purple. Okay, there you go. And then, and then, and then, my fa my team beat question is, Greg, what's your favorite curse word? Fuck. You don't have to say it. He already did. What did he just say? I said, oh fuck. Oh, that, see, mine's dumbass. All right, fantastic. Okay. No, the real question being, uh, you know, yesterday was the fortieth anniversary. Of the oh, Cars that's debut right. album, that's right. and you Rhino, that. you might have heard that. Um, and you know, we we've been you know doing podcasts on the expanded versions when they've come out and so forth. Is is there anything that you can tell us about anything we might expect in the future? Any future plans? Y you know, you know, to tell you to tell you the honest truth, I was surprised that there wasn't like a 40th anniversary like edition of the first album, huh. although. I know that they did that like two CD like deluxe version. Yeah, that was in that had 99. like all the yeah. demos and stuff. Yeah. So arguably, you know, maybe they figured there wasn't enough new material to warrant, you know, a new uh, a new version. Yeah. Uh, that's just my guess. Yeah. Although, Any plans that? You do you know of any plans for footage or anything? Concert yeah, that's footage? that's what I want is DVD. Oh, 
boy, wow, not that I'm aware of. Mm. We're, yeah, we're convinced know. that Rick in his vault has all sorts of footage and concerts and I want Yeah, to... he probably does. <laughs> we have to do a buddy movie, uh, me and Donna and you, Greg, of a uh, big heist breaking into Rick's <laughs> yeah, vault. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a great buddy movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like Greg, Greg, that idea. Greg is our in. He's just, <laughs> hey, just visiting, Rick. Just visiting. Okay, distract yeah. him, Greg. Yeah, that's we'll, that's like, how we'll do it. And, and we'll crouch behind him. Like we'll like try to walk off <laughs> tiny behind him. Try to sneak in the door. Hope Pauline. Yeah, I think that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Um, that'll work. Yeah, footage. That's that's definitely something yeah, that people yeah. want I don't a know. lot more of is uh, concert footage and uh, yeah, that'd be pretty great. So, yeah. you know, put a word in. <laughs> yeah, okay. put a word in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've got to admit, we're not, we're not a very organized uh, uh, conglomeration these <laughs> days. I mean, oh, well, well, just for instance, I don't know if I've talked to anybody since, since the show in Cleveland oh. from the car. <laughs> I think I've, I think I texted Elliot once or twice. And that's and that's it, huh? that's been the extent of my com communication with the other members of the cars. Huh. And that was like, what? Uh, how long should I cook a pork chop in the oven? And, what <laughs> <laughs> and did you get your statue yet? What? Mine hasn't come in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did yeah. arrive. It did arrive. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay! Fantastic. <laughs> Well, well, Greg, you've been, uh, it's been awesome having you on our podcast. It, it really has. And, and okay. you are a, a tremendous gentleman. And, and we will take you up on that part, too, since you brought it up. So oh, yeah. okay. see if we can do that in the future. Okay. We, okay. okay. we are going to go on and, and yeah. do our midnight scroll and, and um, read emails from our, our listeners and so forth. And so, Before well, we I, I guess on your end, you just kind of, Click buy or something on there, right? Sign off. Okay, wait, wait, hang on. Sign off. Wait, 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 okay. I'm here. I'm here. Um, how about now? So I just, <laughs> how about now? Well, I just want to <laughs> pat myself on the back. I didn't cry at all. I didn't get like Good overly job. giddy. Thank you. I do need recognition for that because it's tough. But um, what I really wanted to say was, um, Greg, thank you. Thank you so so much. And tell okay, me, you bet. I'll, I'll be in touch with Elaine, but will you tell her that we said thank you so much and give her a speech yes. for me? Okay, will do. All right. All right. Do I, okay. I'll, tell her I'll Cheerio. Follow on my, I'll follow through on my promise to send Huckleberry Taffy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Well, she likes the Huckleberry Taffy, Greg. Huckleberry Taffy. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Oh, yeah, wow. neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> kind of my special but, but it sounds good. Okay, yeah. well, good. Make sure Elaine shares it with you then. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You bet. Take care. Okay. Bye. How about now? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. So, Donna, that was, <laughs> you know, I don't even have words for how awesome that was. So incredibly cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow, what a great guy. Great guy. Yes. That that just made my big life week. So summer. Our listeners, Donna and I are sitting here in our respective homes just stunned. <laughs> just stunned that 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 we've done this podcast. It's awesome. All right. <laughs> but we do have the midnight scroll to go on to, so we're staying professional. Take me apart because I'm out of control. All right, so Donna, let's get to the midnight scroll. We've got a couple of emails from people. Would you like to go first, or would you like me to go first? I would like to go first. Mine's pretty brief, but okay, it's very nice. It's from our friend Brett Basile, as I like to say, or or Basil, as or Basil. we as he likes to be called. But we <laughs> like to call you Basile, Brett, yes. or BB. I do like to call him BB. He is one of our super fans, and we appreciate him. He's amazing, and I have been listening to his music a lot the last couple of weeks. I dig his CD, which is called Debut, if anybody's interested. 
so he sent us an email that says uh, it actually has a photograph of a kind of a Kelly Green Night Thoughts podcast t-shirt in three years. Holy shit. Yes. Brett bought a Night Thoughts t-shirt? Bless you, sir. Yes. That is awesome. Yes. Wear it with pride, my friend. Wear it with pride. Well, he says, that's what his email is. He says, my summer wear if asked to perform or play in a studio. Thanks and keep hitting us with Night Thoughts. BB. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So thanks Very for that, cool. Brett. Very cool. Very, all right. Well, my email is from Christopher. And Christopher had um, a question. I had to actually go back and research because I had heard about this before, but I really had to had to do it. Ooh, His is, uh, he says, I can't find anything about the 60s band that... Uh, sued Rick over Let's Go. Do you know the name of the band or the song? I'd love to hear it. Oh, well, yes. Here, here's what the situation is, Chris. The The song actually was um, called Let's Go by The Ventures. And The Ventures was a late 50s into the 60s uh, band and surf music mm -hmm. it was basically the deal. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been unable to find anything pertaining to actual court action over this and i don't know if they just don't have records or if i'm not searching right but i th that always was a story that that hey you know they rick had to pay a premium or i don't know something because of the similarities between let's go by the ventures and let's go by the cars and it's just a snippet of a part it's not like the whole song it's okay. just a snippet of a part um and i actually have that um on my phone. Oh, good, good. So, be well. Let me play a little bit of it, and then you'll you'll hear what I mean. I'm going back to the beginning. There you go. Let's go. So you can hear the similarity. Okay. And then it goes into their surf part. So it's that. Let's go. Yes. Part that they they were disputing on it. Um, I see their point. Um, the thing about it is you've got a difference between hand claps and drum beats in, in that part because there isn't hand claps in let's in the cars. Let's go. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. Is well, I guess okay. There yeah. you go. Yeah. I see their point, but I like I said, I didn't find any kind of of. Um, in my research of, you know, what went down, what was paid, you know, they obviously got it worked out because Let's Go is out there and is one of the car's uh, great songs. So we shall see. Yes. Um, yeah, I was, I, someone else had kind of asked about that somehow because there were two songs that they had a little bit of legal tussle over. I'm going to have to re find my research on that. I did start to yeah, look that out. There was a short um, article in a newspaper I found about somebody suing him over Shake It Up, but I never found anything more about that. Huh. Uh, you know, who knows? But, you know, it is my game plan, Donna, okay. to contact Doc Brown, go back in time, <laughs> find high school Richard Otkasik, and tell him, hey, you know what? You're just what I needed, buddy. Boom. Very nice. My life changes immediately. Right. Just for that <laughs> little bit. All right. All right. Um, so I, that's that's the end of the scroll. Okay. Well, I did just find, so as you were doing that, I was sort of looking this up. Uh, something uh, just a little, the defense was that uh, if they were, I don't think they actually, uh, t -t 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 I don't think they were actually sued for Let's Go, but it was bandied about. But the defense was that if they were going to sue the cars, that they were going to, they, they may as well sue every cheerleader in the country uh, <laughs> for cheering Let's Go at basketball games. <laughs> we're sorry, Sally. <laughs> um, you and the whole cheerleading squad, yeah, you're liable. <laughs> yeah, fine. Um, so it was thrown out of court. So maybe it was kind of started. Ah, um, and then uh, they 
plagiarize, uh, shake it up. Um, but the other song, the, no, was no, let's see, let me read my, the other song was nowhere near the same song, and the Cars song was copyrighted before their song ever came out, so it was thrown out too. Hey, slackers. Now, here, here's what I want to know. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I worked a long time, which I'll say like an hour, trying to find information about this Let's Go controversy. And right here on the air, Donna just looks it up like that and finds it. <laughs> well, no, I already had notes. Oh, so you've looked it up. Pro okay, I uh, thought yeah. you had just done that live. And I'm like, man, <laughs> what was I searching? Where, what? I got the magic touch. You do have the magic touch, obviously. <laughs> no, right. I, I had researched before. Somehow it came up and I researched before. And actually, um, someone else had given me this information. So I had just kept it in my notes and to hopefully write a future blog post about it. But this was sort of my foundational information to try to jump off. I haven't researched it much after that. But. Gotcha. Yep. All right. My so kind of in, in ending our episode 31, um, I want to give a little shout out to um, Ken Mills from um, Pop, Popcast Tweets on, on Twitter. He's been very supportive. Um, appreciate what you do. And they have a, they have a killer podcast, by the way, um, if you haven't um, checked that out. Um, and the other person is, I'd like to give a little shout out to John Hughes from Rhino Records um, for uh, replying to my uh, to my messages, I just thought that was really really cool. I and people who know me in my background with trying to communicate with uh, with Rhino over things over the years, he was the first one who's ever replied to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that and I respect that. I think it's awesome because you know a, a part of being in the fanorama, it's not it's not so much you know what what needs to be done or whatever. It's communication. You know if if you know, if you have a question about something, then, you know, people should answer it. So I just uh, wanted to give a shout out to them. Nice. Very nice. And the, uh, the 40th uh, anniversary thing yesterday was fun. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. Lots it was of fantastic. Hashtagging it up. I'm, I'm tweeted out though, man. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I am tweeted out and, and I didn't even count how many tweets I put out, but, um, uh, a lot of mine were scheduled so that they would just tweet themselves. But I, I still probably put in half a dozen or more just on my own, nice. either replying to people or, or whatever. But, yeah, it went off really well. And, and uh, Elliot was following along because, you know, he was retweeting um, at, at different points. So, yeah, it was fun. Very it was cool. cool. Um, you know, the, <laughs> I just have to say the Rhino trivia did you yes. see that? Did you read those questions and stuff? Oh yeah, and did did you see that I I took myself out of that? Now, and here's why: they posted that picture. Yes. Now, I couldn't tell exactly what was in that picture, but Steven. was there? Yes. Was there? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I saw that and I went, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to get in this because with my luck, I'll win the sucker, <gasps> and then I'll be in hot water again with Donna. No, so you I went. I would just go, what, do you think I'd give it to you? You had no, said it. No, if that's, I want it. That's the no. water point. That's I'd sell it to you for 100 David bucks or more. Curry. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I thought, you know, eh, and so I didn't do it. But th those were good, those two questions the, that, that I uh, I messaged you about earlier that, that were separated the, the fan from the mega fan was the Danny Lewis question. Yes. And... The um, Peace Air Force Base question. Yes. The, the normal person doesn't know that. Right. You know, but um, so I, I hope you did well. Well, I'm curious about it. So I haven't heard back. I, um, you know, I was right there because I saw that turntable cover and I just, oh, I, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> one of the questions they asked was where the album title for Candy O came from. Yes, and see, that one's a gray area question. I know. Um, so my answer was that there have been many versions, and I listed the from that trivia quiz we just took recently, which now I'm suspecting might have been written by Rhino, because the only option that was realistic in that one, well, not realistic, 
the only option I guess that was realistic for what they gave us was that it was a brand of candy cigarette and then um, that people have said it was named after Candy Moore. I, I'm thinking that's the answer they were looking for. The Candy Moore? Based on the fact that in the, in the extended edition um, that they had those pictures of Candy Moore that, right. um, that, that Vargas used right. for um, reference photos and so forth. That's, I'm, I'm guessing that's the answer they were looking for. Well, I put three. I put... Yeah, I saw your, I saw yes. your response. Uh, <laughs> Very smart. Well, um, because I'm just like, ah! Okay. But the, they, what, they had six questions. The, I mean, the easy ones. What does Rick turn into? Yeah. Um, and then they had the, the best friend's girl question. Yes. yes. They had... Um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank now. No, what were the other... They had the, they had the Peace Air Force Base question. They had the lineup. original lineup. Um, they had the Candy O. And what was the last one? Uh, what was the last? Oh, the um, to describe the cover art. Oh, describe the cover art. And you know, I almost <laughs> chimed in with with Rick Ocasek's Rick Ocasek's, um description of the steering wheel. Oh, the, remember the, what his? Do you say the semen? The, the, semen the, yeah. The, the, the semen colored steering wheel, but I, I stayed away from well, it. Well, I almost chimed in with Elliot's words and said that it was the girl with a the maw? gaping maw. Yeah, the gaping maw. maw. With a maw of a mouth. The maw of a mouth. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, here was my frustration. They posed five questions, like five minutes apart, each one. So I'm just there. I'm nailing it. I'm first answer every time. 45 minutes go by and they don't do question number six. And I'm thinking, I know. They've done question number six. I got to take Lizzie to lunch. It's her last day of school. I'm like, I got to get out of here. I need question number six. I even messaged them. Is there going to be a sixth question? An hour and a half after the last, after question number five, they post question number six. And of course, by then I'm like, I, I, I have, I got, I got to take Lizzie to lunch. I've got to honor my family. I can't sit in front of this computer. So I leave, go do it, come back. There's the question, it, you know, 30 minutes ago. I'm just like, ah! I don't know how they score the thing. So I don't know if it's like whoever answers it first gets a point or do they just take everybody's answers who yeah. got them right and get points? I, I think right. what they do is they, they go down the, they go down the line, they see people who've got questions, right. And then everyone who got all the questions, right. They're, you know, picking one. That's not fair. Um, well, I mean, you know, they only have one package to give away. If you have so many different people, who, I know, who've but, given the, the correct answers. But people can um, give the correct answer based on reading other people's answers. And exactly. Happy. That's why it's not exactly. there. It comes, it comes down to, you know, choosing a winner from retweets. If you're participating, you're in. Hey, um, it, I, you know. no, I'm too legalistic for that kind of stuff. <laughs> like they, should get a, they should have a point for whoever answered first. They should have a point for if the answer is correct. Yeah. They should have a point for those who answered every question, not just some. You get this point system, and then I I need that turntable cover. That's what it comes <laughs> down to. Is I have well, got to have that turntable cover. I I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm also a firm believer that you know um, if if you're doing a podcast that <laughs> actively promotes a business and steers customers towards their product that and that we're doing reviews of their product and so forth that they would send us you know free product to yes. review but we don't get that either well so, now yeah, that you're buddy they, buddy with john hughes that's I that's think, I email. <laughs> that's called a message that's not called buddy i'm more buddy oh, buddy dang. with Greg hawks now than i am than i am with john hughes which well, is cool maybe so. i should um maybe i should tweet it to roy thomas baker and he'll retweet it <laughs> <laughs> and then the words get out <laughs> yeah. yeah so somebody else wants roy thomas baker on their podcast and they posted a thing to his page saying hey you know mr roy thomas baker we'd love to have you on our show he retweeted it <laughs> see i told you he didn't answer He's it he didn't answer I love it roy. but he I retweeted love roy. it i love roy i and love rtv I too <laughs> we just we need to stop calling him RT being called him RRT, which is Roy retweets. Because <laughs> that's what he does. The guy's awesome. I love it. The guy's awesome. <laughs> well, 
Well, I did send him a, a message. He saw it, and of course, he has not messaged back. But I thought I was quite clever because I said something about, you know, I know our podcast is small, but it would be akin to, say, driving through a snowstorm to see an unheard of band. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I worded it yeah. something like that, but he didn't, he didn't think it was funny Pretty much, pretty much. All right, so <laughs> ending our great show, Donna. Where can people find you? Ooh, come find me on Twitter at Sweet Purple June. I am also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Benjamin Orr colon Sweet Purple June, and I write a blog, Sweet Purple June. It's www.sweetpurplejune.wordpress.com. Come find me. Fantastic. And of course, we mentioned earlier about the Facebook page, but let me, let me say again, uh, you can find uh, Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast on Twitter. It's at the Cars podcast, all one word. So let's let's get some followers on there. Um, and then, of course, my personal uh, Twitter is at night underscore spots. Nice. And those of you that uh, want to know more about Greg, there's a Facebook group called Greg Hawks, a badge for our future, which mega fans know what that means. And well, we don't know what it means. <laughs> we just know where it came from. Anyway, go on Facebook, find Greg Hawks group and ask to join. Yeah. And exactly. lastly, if anybody's interested in buying Rico Kazakh's ticket <laughs> from the woman skating rink, in 79 this is history folks um hey hit me up you never know <laughs> i paid i paid i paid three dollars for it so you know it, it's it's gonna go next to my little rick fly and my rock hall coin and other things that i have here while i podcast just to remind <laughs> me all right That's awesome. all right donna take us out all right thanks everybody bye Hey, greetings to you, my podcast friends. Hey, it's me, your old pal Rico. Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast, is not directly affiliated with the Cars or Rano Records. So we don't end up swimming with the fishes. Here's how the whole thing goes down. Under Section 107 of the fucking Copyright Act of 1976, we got some fair use rights here. Like busting people's balls over things we don't like. Telling you how shit went down. Teaching you schmo something new and digging up dirt about the most fantastical band in the world, the Cats. You know how fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might other infringe on other fucking rights? Yeah, it's like that! The fact we don't make no money, we record this podcast for personal use and teach you stuff so you're not a fucking moron, tips the balance of our podcast shenanigans in favor of fair use. So there you have it. Capiche?